In physics, one of the, our goals is to find uh, the relationships that exist between quantities, okay? Uh, for example, there might be a relationship between a person's height and a person's weight, right? Normally, you think, well, the taller somebody is, the more they weigh. Uh, and that's a pretty good relationship, but you know, it's not always perfect. But, um, but we're looking for relationships between the uh, quantities that we measure. And there's various ways of representing those relationships. I can do it uh, by just you know, making measurements and showing those measurements on a, gra on a, on a, on a data table, or I could graph them. And if, if graphing them comes up with a, uh, a nice um, kind of a, a curve or a straight line or something, I can write an equation that describes the relationship between those, those uh, quantities. So um, that's uh, one of the main things we're going to do. In, um, in physics, uh, we're gonna be doing experiments, we're gonna be making measurements, and we're gonna see if there are relationships uh, that we can identify uh, between these, uh, the quantities that we observed and measured. So um, one of the most common relationships that exists between quantities is the linear equation. Okay, and you've done this in math. This is gonna be a little bit of review for you. Y equals mx plus b, right? The, the old standard from algebra one. Y equals, I mean, you probably did that in the seventh grade, eighth grade, somewhere in there. And, but it may have been a while, so let's shake off the rust a little bit. This right here represents the vertical axis. We usually call that y. And the horizontal axis we call x. And now you can see why I want you to have graph paper notebooks, because we're going to be graphing uh, today. Now, um, and if you have y equals mx plus b, th this represented a straight line, right? So here's maybe the straight line that's described by this, this equation here. Now, um, what did the m stand for? You remember? Slope, right. m was equal to the slope. And our, one of our definitions for slope is the rise over the run, which is a good way to think about it. It's the rise over the run. So it's basically uh, the slope is telling you how fast we're changing um, our y value as we change our x value. Okay, it's the rate at which y is changing with x. Okay, and um, and so uh, it, and visually, it's how steep is this line, right? The steeper the line, the faster y is changing as x changes. The shallower it is, well, y doesn't change very much as I change x. Okay, so that's what the slope means. So the way we calculate the slope is we pick two points on the line, and we, we draw a little triangle like this, right? So here's the run, and here's the rise. Okay, and because this is my x-axis, I'm going to call from here to here. Here's x initial and x final. I figure out how far it is from here to here. That's my delta x. And when I go from here to here, this is delta y. And so my slope is, by definition, the ratio of how much I change uh, in this, this vertical uh, quantity uh, based on how much I change this horizontal quantity. This could be miles and hours, or meters and seconds, or miles per gallon or any kind of rate any anything that changes as something else changes can be represented as delta y over delta x so that's my slope now what does this b represent yeah it's that was called the y intercept you will very rarely hear me call it y intercept except for right now um, and you'll see why in a few minutes now the y intercept what does the y-intercept tell you? What does it mean? Well, it's the value of y when what is true? Okay, it's where, it's where this line crosses the y-axis. But what's true when we cross that y-axis? What else is true? Yes x is zero. So what the y-intercept is, it's the value for y 
when x is 0. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Now, um, so why do we call it b? I don't know. I never really understood why we call it b in math. I taught algebra 1, and I called it b because everybody does. But why do we call it b? It shouldn't be b. Here's what we're going to call it from now on. We're going to call b, we're going to call it y sub 0. OK? So it's, it's a value for y, isn't it? It's the value of y when x equals 0. Now, that's a lot of stuff to write down. I don't want to say y when x equals 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little subscript, a little 0 there. And what that's telling me is, hey, this is the value of y when x equals 0. Now, <laughs> the British, who are just wonderful people, I, I love the way they talk, um, the British have this uh, a word for zero, and it's called not. All right, so we don't. I'm not going to call this y sub zero anymore. I'm going to call it y not. Y not. And the word not is a British kind of word for zero. Okay, so why not? You hear that? You're going to hear that a lot in your mathematical and physics uh, careers in the future. Uh, anything that's, you know, why not? Why not? All right. So we can change uh, my little equation here. See, y equals m, which is delta y over delta x. Uh, OK, that's some ratio I'm going to get, times x plus y naught. And again, does this make sense? Uh, if, if you plug in your value of, of 0 for x, if I say, OK, let x be equal to 0, well, this term goes away. And so your y is equal to y not, okay, which is true. That's where it is. That's where y is when x is equal to 0. OK, now, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm now going to give you data. And we're going to graph that data. And so uh, here we go. So, I'm going to say, um, here are values of x that we measured. And right now, I'm not going to tell you what it is we're measuring. It could be anything. This could be miles, and the other one could be gallons, OK, or something like that. In fact, that's what you're going to do on the worksheet that I handed out. But here's x, and here's y. So this is just a little uh, data table I'm going to create. And let's just go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we measured this. And based on these measurements, we also measured something for y. And so we got 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. So here's what I did. I just did an experiment, and these are the data I measured. And so now what we want to ask ourselves is, is there a relationship between x and y? Is there a pattern here? Now you look at the data, and you go, yeah, it kind of looks like there's a pattern here. What's happening to x? x is getting greater and greater and greater. And what happens to y as x gets greater and greater and greater? Well, it, it increases. And it seems to be increasing by the same amount each time. And it seems to start at 3 and increase by 2. So we can get a lot of meaning and understanding out of just looking at the data. But sometimes the data are not quite as clear as this. So another way of extracting meaning or trying to figure out what's going on is to graph the data. So that's what we're going to do now. Now you have your nice, most of you have your nice graph paper, so draw a nice graph of this. And so I'm going to make this my x-axis. So one, two, three, four, five. And then now y. We're going to scale y to match the data. We're going to go from 0 to uh, 13, or, or thereabouts. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is my y-axis. Now this is just a little hand sketch I'm doing. You've got graph paper, so it'll look better. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So label your axis, put your scale on there, 
with, with even increments and everything like that. Now I'm going to start graphing, and I'm going to say, okay, uh, uh, when x is 0, y is 3. When x is 1, y is 5. When x is 2, y is 7. All right? You've done this before. 3 and 9. So 3 and 9 is about right there. 4 and 11. So here's 4. And look, it's a nice straight line. Even with my crummy hand sketch, 5 and 11 is right there. And so now we've got a nice straight line. So now when I graph the data and it comes out to be a nice straight line like this, I can definitely say there is a linear relationship between the variables. There definitely is something going on here. So, and when it turns out to be a straight line like this, I call this my graphical model. I now have a graphical interpretation of what happened in my experiment, okay? And, but when it's a straight line like this, I can say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can write a mathematical equation that will represent these data. That will, get, that will tell me something about the world. And so I'm going to start off with my mathematical model with, um, oh, I'm almost off uh, camera. Don't let me go off camera. Y equals mx plus b. And so I can say, hey, look, whatever y is, I can predict what y is going to be. Now, what is my slope? Well, just pick two points on here and just make a little triangle, a slope triangle. Well, this goes, x going from 1 to 4. So how much is it between 1 and 4? It's 3. We'll just go 4 minus 1 is 3. 3. That's my delta x. What's my delta y? Well, it started here at 5 and ended up here at 11. So what is 11 minus 5? That'll be my delta y. That's 6, isn't it? I, I know this problem is super easy. Don't worry, they're going to get harder. x plus, now what is, oh, I used b. I didn't want to use b. I wanted to use y not. What is y not? What is the value for y when x is 0? It's 3. Now we can clean this up a little bit. y equals 2x plus 3. Okay, this is a very good representation of what I observed in my experiment. And this is one thing that physicists try to do. They look at experiments and they try to find, they use graphs to see if there's an identifiable relationship between the variables. And then uh, they write equations. And those equations um, are used to try to uh, come up with a mathematical model you know, to uh, tell us what's going on. Now, by the way, uh, this mathematical model can make uh, predictions. Um, you can, like, what do you think y is going to be when x is equal to 10? When x equals 10, what will y be equal to? It's easy. It's going to be 23, isn't it? All right? Yes? OK, go. Um, so, um, so that's what's going on um, uh, with this. We, we use equations in physics because equations are mathematical models that describe the relationships that exist between quantities that we can observe in nature. Uh, now, what we're going to do next time is we're going to do, go through this process. We're going to look at data. We're going to graph it, and from those graphs, we're going to try to create a mathematical model. But we're going to modify things a little bit. We don't use y and x every time. We try to use letters that represent the quantities that we're actually using uh, to do experiments that, that, we, that, we're, that we're observing. Um, and we're also going to include units with our numbers. When we make measurements, uh, we quite often have units associated with those measurements. If I'm measuring time, I have units of seconds. If I'm measuring length, I might have units of centimeters or meters or inches or miles or parsecs or, you know. Um, so 
we have to identify those in the equation. So uh, we will do that uh, at the beginning of class next time. So we are done.